Is it true that Steve Harvey tried to get Mary Harvey to sleep with Bill Cosby? Can we tell them the Steve and Bill Cosby story? Pops, Jello pudding, pops, frozen pudding on a stick. Because when I told it briefly after you told me back, like in 2020, you know, magically, my, the, the video got taken down. It disappeared. The whole live froze. Shut it down. Yeah. The, Mary the said. I'm going to say Mary said. <laughs> okay. So Mary said that she went over to Bill Cosby's house. Steve had a dinner date with Bill Cosby and his wife. So everybody chilling, sitting down in the living room, chilling, Bill doing his thing, and Steve and the wife sitting up there, and Mary and Bill standing over here. So Steve's then talking in the living room with Bill Cosby's wife, and Mary, I'm over here to, with Bill talking. Then Mary said he made a drink, made her a drink, and then y'all know that little jelly pulling, that little smile he do with the jelly pulling thing. She yeah. said that nigga did that. She was like, I, said, I was like, what's going on? I said, so what you do, Mary? She said, I'm just looking at this nigga. I said, so what's happening? She said he took her hand, grabbed her hand, and walked her to the bedroom. And I said, so where was Steve? She said, Essie, that's the point. He was still sitting up there talking to be a wife, not doing that. I was like, really? I said, so you got your drink. He got his drink. She said he got that funky jelly pulley smile on his face. And they went to the bedroom. So the bill sat Mary on that bed and was still looking. And she, she said she was sipping that motherfucker. Then she was drinking that drink. And then she said, homeboy, eased over at her. Mary said, oh, hell no. This ain't finna go on tonight. Mm. And Mary said she got up and she left. And she left Steve there. So when Mary left and left Steve there, Steve came home hours later. And I'm just saying, what happened to him hours later? Because she said you was funky when you came in. So who was you smelling like, Steve, when you came in after Mary left? Because you was at Bill, the homegirl house. So she said you had a little funky odor about yourself, like sex was all on you. So what what happened right there, Steve? Can acquire minds would like to know? Can we can we find out? So I'm just saying, Mary said he didn't look himself. He looked disorientated. He had a funky smell about himself. I said, well, man, what you think happened? She said, you know what happened. I said, no, tell me. She yeah, said, I don't me. know. She said, I don't know. I said, you know, you just don't want to say that. She said, you know, too. She said, but I don't have to tell you. She said, because I know what he smelled like, and it wasn't a good smell. I said, well, I'm going to shut up right there. I ain't got nothing else to say. And that's why I left that at. So y'all take that the way y'all wanna take that too. Just <laughs> the smell. The okay. Smell. It was uh. Let's just say it was funky. We'll leave it at that. It was feet and booty for duty. That's what it was. <laughs> All that together. <laughs> okay. Next. We we'll let them read between the lines on that. And 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 why? I mean. I feel like I know why Steve Harvey was so jealous of Bernie Mac, but what was the relationship between Bernie Mac and Mary Harvey? Mary said, <laughs> Mary said, Mary said she used to go on tour buses with them when they did Kings of Comedy. So when they used to go do on Kings of Comedy, she used to kick with everybody, but it was something about Bernie Mac that just turned her on. And she said he smelled so good. See, Steve, that's what you get for smelling funky. She wanted somebody to smell a little bit better. So if you hadn't been smoke, funky, she might have been not been back there with Bernie Mac in the back of that bus. So her and Bernie Mac used to kick it in the back of the bus together. I said, what y'all doing back there, Mary? She said, oh, we just chilling. Do you think I want to believe that? No, I don't want to believe that she was just on the back of the bus chilling with Bernie Mac. Do I think she flirted with Bernie Mac some? Yes, I do, because of some of the things that she had already said. And one day they were sitting on the back of the bus having fun and really laughing. And um, Steve was in a bad mood. And he came back there and saw Bernie Mac talking to Mary. And he just went ballistic because he said he she said Steve heard them laughing and he got real upset. And then he tried to pull Mary from back there where he was at. Mary wouldn't go. So now he mo pissed. And it seemed like it set the preference for a certain vendetta. And every since then, it seemed like he had attitudes with Bernie Mac. So that's where it really started from because Mary liked the way Bernie Mac smelled on the back of the bus. 
I dare say too, Bernie Mac was a was a was like a man's man, a real man, and just yeah. down to earth. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I think I think Mary liked that too. You know, Steve, Steve, I don't know him personally, I ain't never met him, but he gives me the energy he'll do anything for money, like he'll sell his soul for money. And and Bernie Mac told Mary a couple of times that that ain't what that that ain't what you want. And she really didn't understand what that meant to later on. She said Bernie Mac was a pretty straightforward person and very humble guy. She said, but when you get on his bad side, he will tell you. And it was always something that Steve, Steve appeared to be like inferior because he always wanted to be over Bernie Mac. He wanted to be his style, his personality. He could not be because let's keep it real. He's not funny. You do a good as a host, but he really not funny like that. You did good on your little sitcoms, but you really ain't funny like that. You can't you can't joke with somebody and come behind Bernie Mac. I wouldn't like you know what I'm saying. That's like becoming behind somebody like of like whatever because he was the Mac Daddy of comedy, and True. Steve just happened to get thrown in there. And a lot of times, Mary was saying when they go on the tours that they would try to make Steve be last because nobody wanted to like go before, I mean, after Steve, because they already knew it was going to be a dud and you don't set the pace for the people. So then mm -hmm. he would get through in the back and then he would get mad because he got through in the back because who, who want to go before, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody going to go and then you a dud. And so they didn't want him in the beginning because now you don't set the pace. So they put him at the end and he still didn't go good. So he had an attitude behind that. He never said it. He just had to get in where he fit in. Mm. And to and to back that up, because Steve recently did an interview with Shannon Sharp. Now, Steve insinuates that, you know, the Kings of Comedy broke up because, well, you know, certain people was Hollywood and wanted to be an actor. Cause I I wanted to switch up sometimes. Right. You know we all kings. Right. They you didn't never. You wanted to go first. Maybe go first sometimes. Man, go in the you, middle. Hey man, let me sit in the rocking chair. Right. Let me be second. Right. Bernie sat in the rocking chair, and I went man because you got said warm them up. Bernie in the rocking chair. You closing behind these dudes is rough. So that's where we had our little. Is that, is that where you and Bernie butted heads? That was our only odds. That was our only odds. Because I just, man, y'all got to give me a chance to win, too. Next year, he added DL. Now we got a problem. We can't have four acts because who going to go last now? So the argument was, Steve, you going last again. I'm going, hell no. No. No, man, we all getting the same check. So then Walter said, well, why don't one of y'all host the show? Ain't nobody want to be the MC. My hand was shot straight up. What happened? Why, why did it end? After the movie, man, that was probably... Blessing and a curse? Yeah. The four of us. It was the largest comedy movie ever in history. And so when it ended, the thing that the Blue Collar Comedy Tour did was they stayed together. together. We split up. You wish you would have stayed, kept it together, could have kept it together we, a couple of... We, we tried everything. But... You know, dudes felt like they was movie stars. I never saw myself as a movie star. Referring to Bernie, you know, Steve couldn't. It, Bernie was just the man Steve was hating. But Steve even said he went from being one of the comedians to technically just being a host because he just he couldn't he couldn't keep up with Bernie. Bernie killed it. The people love Cedric the Entertainer. Yeah, Steve, it was like a. Uh, yeah, but you know what? Like Hollywood, didn't I see you on You Got Served, Steve? When he on that? Oh, you didn't do that good on that. That's probably because nobody remember it, but he was on that. You know what I'm saying? You did say a little something about, you know, he's on one of my dear movies, you know, but he never had a, a, a current role or something of a significant role. It was like, how you doing? And then they shut him out. because He's not an actor. He's not an actor. Exactly. That's why they say, hey, and then they fade him out. Because he's not an actor. So you can't, when you're an actor, you got to command people's attention. You got to hold their attention. He don't hold their attention. And so that's what makes the difference. Bernie Mackin could hold people's attention. They commanded authority when they walk in the room. When they see Steve, they start yawning. I'm just saying, Steve, you know it's true. It's true. But in, in, in what would, in what probably intimidated Steve even more is that Bernie was just being himself. Right, and he smelled good, and you—he didn't. <laughs> I'm just saying that would intimidate me too. My wife smelling all a man, and you better go buy some of Bernie Mac cologne. Okay, so it probably was a lot of things that Steve 
realize now that he probably could have did differently, but it was almost like whatever it is for him to do, he wants to be able to do that. He don't care about nobody else. It's just all what Steve wanted to do. Mm. Let's tell Damn. the truth today, people. Jealousy is something else. But now let me ask you this. Did somebody do you or do you believe that Bernie Mac's death was somewhat of a setup? Yeah. Now, I, I'm not going to put too much emphasis on this because I don't know for sure. I got to find the letter. But there was a letter written to me and said that the night that they went on a comedy show, he was given a glass of lemonade and Steve handed it to him. Then two weeks later, he pretty much was sick and died. That shit's in the letter. I don't know the lemonade for me. I don't even know where he was at to get no lemonade. But they said after he drunk that lemonade, he really got sick and then he died. What they said from the or whatever, I'm not sure. I just know they said that Steve Harvey handed that man a glass of lemonade. I don't know whether that's true or false. I'm just saying that was in a letter that I had saying they went to a comedy um, adventure one night. They stopped at a club or whatever the facility was. They stopped at. Everybody wanted to get some drinks and stuff like that. Bernie wanted some lemonade. Steve was adding about going to get the homeboy some drink. He brought him a glass of lemonade and he drunk it. Mm. That's what the letter said. Mm. And then right after that, about I think about two or three weeks later, he was in the hospital. And then the next thing I know, he was dead. Steve, you can you can come validate in this way you want to. Anybody want to validate it or challenge me on it? I mean, it's what it is. I probably go back in and look for that letter since we talked about it. But there was a letter written to me. But I always felt like he had something against Bernie Mac after I found out Mary liked the way he smelled. And they used to chill on the back of the bus together with the dough shut. What you got the jump shut for? Paying peekaboo? Peekaboo. What, 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 what is two grown people that find each other attractive going to do? Yeah, exactly. But Mary had got tired of Steve cheating. And Bernie Mac had warned Mary about Steve. He did. She said he didn't just come straight out and say it. But he did endo windows because they knew who Steve was. So that's what that that was her concern. And she said the whole time after she got that letter and she found out Steve had got somebody pregnant, Steve was a serial cheater. He's a serial liar. She said he wouldn't tell the truth about nothing. I think I sent you a letter from his mistress where he said if his butt was up in the air and it was a tattoo with his name on it and his social security number on his ass, that he would still say it ain't him. So now you're a real good liar because you got paperwork and you still gonna lie. Damn. And you can't you can't change black and white. But he said himself that he said that if someone said, Is that you? and he know it was him, he would still say it wasn't him. So what does that tell you? Why would somebody want to promote? Why would somebody want him on Family Feud? Why would you want him on anything if you know that he will sit up here and lie? Why would you want him on anything if he done destroy a wife? Like he was married to Mary. He didn't have to take her son. He didn't have to do what he did. And then to add insults to injuries, I know Mary went through a lot. I know the children went through a lot. Storm, I was nobody. Like for him to start threatening me, harassing me, going after my family, threatening my life, calling my phones. Like for what? Because I felt like they wanted me to have a nervous breakdown. I felt like they wanted to hurt me. And I'm going to be gangster about this and I'm going to keep it one to one. What I have now, no, but one night they had put some pictures about me being abused with about my mama because Steve paid my sister $2,500, $2,500, a box of chicken, two-piece chicken. She didn't get the damn biscuit. She didn't get no jelly. She didn't get no tea with it. She just got a two-piece snack, no biscuit. And she telling this man, trying to tell this man lies about me. My sister did this. And he would take her on them stalker channels you was talking about. And she would just say all kinds of things. They had like eight sites stalking me, but this one particular site stood out at me because they were mocking me being abused and how my mother had did me. I had never experienced nothing like that before. I called a suicide hotline because I wasn't going to kill myself. I wasn't going to kill myself. I know what that means. I called a suicide hotline, but I wasn't going to kill myself. And I started packing my bags and I called them homeboys and they was like, Essie, what you want to do? Because, see, when you plan with people and you think they may be crazy, nigga, I could have snatched you. And you would have been down in somebody's basement. I would have been filming that shit on YouTube while you playing with me. Because you played with Margie, Marsha, and all them. My name's Essie. My shit don't start with M-A-R. 
and you came for me and you didn't know how far you could take me and you underestimated me as a woman, an activist, a mother, because you had dogged all these women. But I had to catch myself, Storm, because I said, I'm going to go to jail. If I do anything illegal, I'm going to go to jail. You know, and then I ain't going to lie. I had to take therapy. And I told my therapist, she said, well, Essie, what you going to do when you do whatever you going to do? She said, what if he have a heart attack before you get there? I said, his punk ass probably would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now you're going to get me for killing this cat. So I'm not even going to do that. So I had to get in my right mind and start praying, Storm, because he had took me to a level because I'm a lover. I'm not a fighter. I never had men calling me out my name. I ain't never. I've been married several times. And I ain't never had no man disrespect me like Steve just did. But what I knew is he had told Mary, when I'm done with you, everybody's going to believe you crazy because I'm Steve Harvey. And he Dang. has done that to so many women. He did it to Terry. He did it to Corlanda Harris. Corlanda Harris was a transgender woman. And you ought to seen her in the beginning. She was a beautiful woman. I got pictures of her before and after. You could tell she had a mental breakdown. And he paid some deputies go into jailhouse and beat her up. It said in her court documents. That's who Steve Harvey is. While y'all sitting up there talking about he's a role model, he's a motivational, he's an inspirational speaker. But he destroyed every. He tried to destroy everything about me. Well, before this, all this happened, I had my own salon. I was doing my thing, but because I had went through all this mentally, and this nigga came trying to find me and destroy me, I didn't even know what to do. Storm, I had never experienced that like that. It was like I was lost. And even when Geneva stood by me, and she was the one blogger that would keep putting stuff out by Steve, everybody else saw all this happening, and then nobody tried to help me. And I don't know why that is. Why is it because you see people on TV that you're going to believe what they say? Because they on TV, they will lie to you. There's stories, but I could tell you about rerun and I was married to a celebrity. You wouldn't believe it, but it happened. So you can't believe half of what you hear and none of what you see unless you physically see it for yourself. And when people take you to the breaking point like that, I had never thought like that. But see, you don't don't put nobody in an uncompromising position because you don't never know what somebody might do at a breaking point to prove their truth. And I'm at, I was at that breaking point that we, we're going to do something here because you're not going to keep doing this to me. And I didn't want my family to keep asking me dumb ass questions about Steve Harvey like I was some kind of criminal because he was a bigger person than me. So what was I supposed to do? A good point. That's 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 heavy. That's that's heavy. Um, and if it gets too heavy, storm that we want to stop and you think about some of the stuff, put it together. We come back. We can do another day too, baby. It's on you. Whatever. Oh yeah. Oh it's yeah. A lot. It's it's a lot. We can always give them a part two or part three because believe me, the people got to take it in and then they got to digest it and they like wait a minute because we can't just go past the fact that he was with a transgender. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what happened was, I think this transgender was going to expose him. You read them. You saw that the video. I, I can't find the paperwork, but that paperwork is in Pacer. And there's two more um, gay people that's supposed to be in there. Okay? That Steve did something to. Another blogger, which I want to call her name, told me about it. That's how I got that case. But that case stuck out to me because she said that she said something to Bruce Steve Ego. And when she said something to Bruce Steve Ego, he started going after her. From 2008 to 2014, he probably knew he was going to get exposed and somebody was going to say something, but he messed with that girl all that time. So now, why would you want to shut up a transgender woman unless you was messing with her? Mary said she caught you with a computer full of men. What the fuck are you doing? She did kind of look like a dude a little bit. You know what I'm saying? She had the little short haircut and everything like a dude. You look like a lady. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next, and anything I say, I will stand by it. If you want to call me for court, just let me know. You can email me because I won't, I'm not going to take back anything I said. I sent you the papers to prove what the transgender said. And then adding insults to injuries, any case that Steve has been on, it needs to be investigated because he do stuff and then he go try to gag people behind closed doors. Mm -mm -mm. And quite natural, when I see how he locked my, Mary up for 30 days and paid those judges, what was I supposed to do? So that's why I came back and I was married POA, but then I seen them threaten Mary. Then you're threatening me. And then when I sued him, he started going after my whole family. It was it was horrible. And he didn't care. He didn't anything, care. 
anything to save his image. You yeah. you told me you told me a funny story too about his hair pieces, his wigs. I want to find that damn video. That's what I need to find. Um. Okay, so I think it was in 2017 when I met Geneva. Me and Geneva on the mic talking, and I had never seen the paperwork from 2013 when he was trying to put me in jail, right? And mm. when he sells a coke spit, I had never seen that paperwork. So I get the paperwork in 2017 because Mary and Sue have a murdered soul. And Mary said, nigga, I should have left you on the side of the road with a hole in your head. She called Margie every slut, every bitch. I said, bitch, that's why they put you in jail. They didn't put you in jail because of my videos. Bitch, did you read that paperwork? <laughs> she tried to say she went to jail behind me, bitch. You went to jail because you said you was going to leave that nigga on the side of the road with a hole in his head. Bitch, oh, girl. I wasn't saying that. I said, what you were saying? She said, that nigga had a hole in his afro. I said, what? She said, yeah, he used to have to pack it down like this because the hole was like this. And she said, he would have to pack. I said, what? So he had a makeshift. Yeah. So she said, she said, won't you just cut that shit off? Because he was going bald in the top. And then he started wearing them two pages. Y'all know them lines are too straight, right? I know, yeah, uh, all that, all that, y'all, all them hair top. Look at that, y'all. That ain't his. That's them little cuts. Steve Harvey was the first male that I really know to wear um, a lace front for men. A lace front. That's it right there. The lace front for men. See that cheese? Hey, yeah. A lace front for men. So Mary said she used to have to go get this dude high tops, shampoo him. Put them in a trash bag and take them in the back of the garage, uh, back of the barbershop so they could put them on. Steve would have to have a personal session because all this was bald and he just had this on the sides. And then they had to put the high top there. And she said, I said, well, how many did he have, Mary? Mary said he had about five or six of them, if not more. Hell, he about one when one don't look right. So he really was the first dude to ever wear lace fronts. I, oh, I'm a master cosmetologist. That right there, them edges, baby, them edges was too, too straight, baby. They was too fine. They was right at it. And see how, see right there, uh-huh, so, uh-huh, there it is. See, y'all see how he started off low? Y'all see how he started off low with his lace front? Then later on, it got higher and higher? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and, so had, and his funny-looking ass got the nerve to be cheating on anybody. Yeah. He, he only looked good when he got money. That's what Margie said, basically. Nigga, I ain't want you when you ain't have no money. You ain't look good. That right there, too. That's mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what he look like with the men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's when it was low. And then you remember how it kept getting higher and higher? He got higher and, and higher. He had, yeah, he had different levels that he go to. I was like, what you say? I knew it anyway, though. And then eventually, they started calling him out. Like, come on now, now Steve. Now, let it go. Yeah. And so I think Margie kind of got tired. She wasn't like Mary. She ain't going to go wash nothing. Mary said she washed them, shampooed them, conditioned them, picked them out, sat them on. I said, girl, you did all that. You must have loved your man taking his hair through the barbershop for him to put it on in trash bags. Why you didn't just take it? I would have been carrying like a, 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 a crown. He goes, dum, 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 dum. <laughs> Here comes the time. You know what I'm saying? Don't just take it in a trash bag. You know what I'm saying? You have smashed it back now. And he used to be embarrassed. He wouldn't even take the trash bag. He wouldn't even take the hair in there himself. He'll go to his barber, let his barber start, and then call Mary and say, bring it up there. Because you was embarrassed to take your hair up there? Well, women do it all the time, my brother. It's okay. You know? I mean, we do it every day, all day. It's okay. You know? What? It's, it's just interesting that the more and more I'm learning about him, I'm like, wow. But it don't matter how much money you got. Insecurities truly run deep. It does. It does. And some things happened to Steve when he was little. I'm not going to say nothing about that. But he was violated when he was younger. And he never spoke about it. Oh, but Mary man. told me about it. And Steve, because I don't like you, I'm not going to say anything about that. Because it would be nothing for me to like, like come up off of self telling you that. I am very sorry about the person who violated you when you were young. I wish you really should have told somebody because maybe you would be all jacked up like you are now. But if there's any way that he would see this and hear this, know that I would never try to destroy him because that's nothing that I would go um, hard about someone and you're violated by another person. But I do believe by him being a child and he was violated by a church member. I mm. think 
that has an issue with with him right now. He probably would never want someone to say, and you can think about what it is. It would be for Steve to tell on that church member and to say that. And it's still to this day, because of the things that Steve Harvey has went through, some of his actions could have been displayed on the things that he went through when he was younger himself, because he's a liar. He didn't have a relationship with his mother like that. He barely had one with his father. You see what I'm saying? Did he love his mother? Yes, but it was not at the magnitude because Mary said when his mother was on his deathbed, her deathbed, Steve was somewhere doing a show or something. And she continued to call Steve to come to her bedside. And Steve had a show to do that was more important. The next thing, I don't know if his mother had a stroke or something, she got all like discombobulated. And when Steve made it to the hospital, she was already dead. Wow. And when Steve, got it, when Steve got his money, he said his mother changed. Ask Mary. Mary, Steve's mother said he changed. I also got to talk to Steve Harvey's brother's wife. You didn't know that, did you, Steve? I, oh, I, um, I didn't know that. Mary, um, when I was being stalked and harassed, and I got some text messages from her, my, by the way. She said Steve was a good man and that I need to give him a chance to make this situation right. She said that Steve did not mean to do what he did to me. So then I got her number and I called her. When we got through talking, she didn't want me to let Steve know that she had talked to me. So it's out now, sweetie. So it's whatever. I still didn't call your name, but this is Steve's sister, this Steve's brother's wife. Um, she also told me that Steve was paying all their bills, that if she told something, he would stop paying her bills. So she couldn't tell me anything. She didn't want me to destroy her brother-in-law because he was paying a lot of people bills. He wasn't paying mine. So that ain't have nothing to do with me. Hello. She also said that Mary used to come over to her house because Steve was a slight bit abusive at times and Mary would come over there and get away. I saw the restraint order, so he can't lie. They were in those court documents. And one time he slashed Mary tired so she couldn't leave and get away because she didn't want to be bothered. But at the end of the day, even though he had a violent streak about himself, he would still try to make things okay. And she wanted me to know that if I destroy Steve, I destroy everybody in his family. Um, because he take care of so many people. And she said he drinks a lot and he gets drunk. And when he gets drunk, he does not how to hold his liquor. And mm -hmm. a lot of times when he called me on the phone, which I got phone calls of him calling me, y'all can go over and see some of the stalking calls. You can hear a voice and know who voice it is. And because of that, she said that he just, he didn't know what to do because he ain't never been in a situation. He had bullied so many people, but he had never been up against a person like me. So I used some of the stuff that he did, I started using it against him. When they would make videos, I would take their videos and retake them and put them on my page from them threatening me. But because I used his footage, they flagged my page for copyright and they took it all down. But what they don't realize is when I filmed it, I still got copies of it now. I don't have all that they did, but it was these about 800 videos of people stalking me. And Margie Harvey was a stalker called Coco Love. She was in on it too. Your ass had to use a mask because I know you ain't gonna come to me face to face because that ain't what kind of broad shit you are. But just mm. to know that they put themselves in this situation trying to like degrade people or run them crazy or disrespect them because we're telling the truth. Everything that Margie get right now, I wanted to feel sorry for her, but I cannot feel sorry for her. I cannot feel sorry for her the way she did to Jimmy Townsend. I can't feel sorry for her the way she let Winter grow up without his mother. I can't feel sorry for her because you let Steve beat Winton and you covered it up. I can't feel sorry for you because you helped um, Steve take Winton away from Mary. I can't feel sorry for you because you let Jimmy did 27 years for your rotten ass because you didn't have enough class enough to go try to make sure your kids his father's okay and he took that 27 years with you no man in this world could take a 27 year old and i mean 27 years in a prison and i still not be by him that's not even what type broad i am you see what i'm saying i was married and i'm cool with my body i was married to my bodyguard and i'm cool with my bodyguard to this day he's the first man that i've been married with before we separated now all this stuff with steve harvey it was too much steve harvey and brought some of his family members in to stalk mm. me and come against me. So it just made us kind of break and we had to separate because I didn't want to keep going through that. Lord have mercy. As you were uh, 
talking about that with Steve Harvey's brother's wife. Are you first off? I just read that Steve Harvey had the twin that his twin brother, Terry. Terry, you, okay. So I found an article from 2011. Oh, mm -hmm. people, oh, see. Come on, come on, come on. Some shit now because people come gonna on, start come digging. on, come on, come on. He so paid the, that he paid him off to recap that. Come on now. Uh, this is from Magic 102.3. I don't know what city that's in, but this was published February 1st, 2011, written by Courtney Hicks. Read and, and it says Steve Harvey's brother Terry Harvey and his wife called into Sam Silk radio show. And showed their support for Steve's ex-wife Mary being hurt and frustrated. Terry said he hasn't spoken to Steve in a year and a half. Mary posted three videos on YouTube over the weekend where she said Steve was a cheater and his current wife Marjorie had an affair with Steve while she was still while he was still married to Mary. The story keeps going legs. Now, let's play this. Hold up, I gotta take it down. Let me know if you can hear the audio. You should be able to. I don't know about that. I just, I just check like the number. Okay. okay. Yeah. Understood. Well, I like that seven 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 for sure. Superstar. Around the same time, bro. Oh, that's, that's right. Always, yeah. Okay, that's another interview. Okay, never mind. That's something else. So, all right. So when you go to the page, they had the interviews have been taken down. Yep. And that's why he paid his wife. He paid his sister him off. That's that's what that right there. That's how he. That's what made him start paying him, that interview. And you got to know, I know, because how would I know his brother's name? That is very true. You and me and you have never talked about that before. Now check this out. It's so much be coming back when you start remembering. You know what I mean? True, but check this out. Before. So the, the date of this interview, Mary did an interview with Tom Joyner on January 31st, 2011. The interview that Terry Harvey did with their radio station was on February 1st, 2011. So Mary did her interview with Tom Joyner. Then Terry did his interview with that radio station. All oh, Steve was mad as a motherfucker. And, and Tom Joyner... Bought Mary on there to try to not help her, but make her look stupid for Steve. Now he couldn't. If I had been on there, he could have made Mary look stupid. I would have ate Tom Jordan up for breakfast, dinner, and supper. He wouldn't have. He that nigga when he had them legs to stand on because oh, he was a liar too. He tried to make Mary look bad. Well, you know Tom. I mean, <clears throat> they're in the business, so of course they gonna look out for each other. Tom ain't gonna tell. You know. You know what I mean. He ain't gonna tell the truth. But they know who to invite on their shows and who not to. Hello. That's why certain people don't get invites. Because they like know. Ricky Smiley. Ricky Smiley did a show where he had Mary's personal assistant on there, right? She was a lie, too. And Ricky rolled with that lie. Mm. Is that the same? What's that article? Tom Joyner? Yeah, this is the Tom Joyner. And I'm just looking here. Um, looking here at the old picture of them. Mary had a cool job to make that nigga happy. 2011, Mary Harvey told Tom Joyner, no, no, Tom Joyner invited Mary on and encouraged her to move on from the 2005 divorce. So he brought Mary on to tell her to let it go. Yeah. And, and like, who, who was Tom Joyner to tell her to let it go? When is her life? But who is your bald-headed ass to say anything? It, and where uh, your wife at, Tom? Uh-oh. Uh uh mary said it took me a long time to get to this point the reason i've been silent this entire time is because i did take into consideration what it would do to both of our families and our community but she said she decided to publicly discuss the fall of the marriage because keeping quiet hasn't served me physically hell no nah, with a bully like steve harvey being quiet wasn't gonna you were supposed to get at that nigga ass yeah, but then look at this. Even though all that happened, look at the whole world just, just shut down and just kept letting this cat. That's why he keep doing doing because they keep allowing him to keep violating women. She said it hasn't served our son Winton. I have suffered physically because of it. I'm not in good health right now. And that video, that interview was gone too. What you call it? Washed out storm? Um uh white, wiped out. Yeah, see, see. 
And that's what they did. As soon as I came on it, it's like they started wiping everything out because you could go back and put trails. Like at one time, I found articles where they had pictures of Margie, but they were calling her Mary Harvey because people mm -hmm. still didn't really know what was going on because they were still trying to look like the perfect family. Mm -mm -mm. Damn, and they know people are not gonna go back 11 years. People are not going to, a lot of this stuff, let, let me give y'all some tips. A lot of the realty was on the internet like right before the surge of the YouTubes and this platform and that platform. A lot of people used to upload tea on these celebrities back in the day that they've had scrubbed off now. Right. But when you, YouTube and shit, blogging all that stuff, Media takeout was running things back in the day, but media takeout was always kind of known as like, eh, it might be true, it might not be. Right, right. Bloggers don't care. Y'all don't care. Y'all just put that out there. And yeah. it's what it is. People are really leery now because of Tasha K. But I think more bloggers pick out better stuff than some of the media people do now. Because there's a lot of bloggers ain't like me. I'm not scared to speak my truth if I know I'm telling the truth. I have no problem like saying what I say. I don't want anybody to think like I hate Steve. I hate what he did. I hate that he's a liar. I hate that he didn't come forth. I hate that he ruined a lot of people's lives. I hate that he know he was on the down low and kept it on the down low. You should have just been on the up and up and stop playing with women and knowing that you like both. It's okay. It's natural now. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I got plenty of gay friends. You get what I'm saying? They're males, but I love male gays. I don't really care. That's not going to let me look at you no differently. But some of the stuff he did, he can't even say why he did it. You see what I'm saying? He can't, like he told told Jimmy that he was a punk ass father. Where your punk ass daddy at now? Well, where your punk ass is at when, when Marsha needed you to take care of the twins and your son? Where were you at then? Why did she have to call to ask you some since 2013? So we talk about punk asses. Let's just do this and we going to do it. You can't throw no stone, brother. You got stones behind your, your back yourself and you ain't trying to do right. And then I don't care what he say or how he look at it. Nothing that Steve Harvey has done has been right. So until these studios and stuff, y'all stop backing him. Stop making him bigger than what he is. Stop letting him lie and destroy people's lives because he destroyed a great part of me. I lost friends, family members, and a lot behind Steve Harvey. And he never even cared. He Now, he done text me and said he's sorry in so many ways, even on Instagram. If you lie, I'll pull that shit. And also, he done talk nasty to vote too. About if you lie, I'll pull that shit. And I'll, I'll send it to Storm. So we ain't trying to play them kind of games. He told me he wanted me to be quiet and keep it his little secret. He wanted me to be that little secret. And can we start over and you get to know me? But because you keep making up different accounts to try to get to know me, I'm not going to do that. I want him to be honest about it and go and tell the world that he lied on me. But if he say he lied on me and he ever admit that, that's going to destroy everything else about him. Yeah, it's true. So what do you think, Storm, about him, how he stalked me? And through all this, what would, what would be the main purpose in trying to silence me unless I knew the truth? It, that would be the only reason why. Now, I, now the way my mind worked, I mean, you have the strongest voice out of everybody that's ever come for him. Um, I'm trying to figure out why he never just paid you off. I would have dropped a couple of mil on you just to get you to go away because the, the source all comes back to you. If you be quiet, everybody else is going to go away because they, they don't everybody don't have it in them to go up against somebody like that. And that's understandable because he has a machine behind him. He ain't shit as a person, but he has a machine um, and money and this and that. And, you know. But then pay me off to do what, though, Storm? Pay me off to what? Pay me off not to do my book? To Pay not do your book, to never talk about it again, to leave Mary alone, don't talk to her no more. I'm surprised he didn't offer you two, three, four million just to go away, put you on a, a lifetime NDA, um, and go about his business. I'm I'm just surprised. I, 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 you know, I would be scared to take it. You know why? Because I don't see what this nigga do behind closed doors. So I'll be scared to take anything from him because you can't trust him. Who going to write it up? Ricky? Oh, you? Who, who going to write that up? You know what I'm saying? And then so, okay, let's say if I did do that, he said, Essie, because I'm, I'm going to call his lawyers and I'm going to tape it. So if anybody see this, you take my call, I'm telling you I'm going to do it. All my calls are monitored. 
But I want to know how we're going to come to a peace of resolution and take me up out of that court case. And you got a warrant for my arrest on something I didn't do. So as long as you continue to blackmail me, as long as you can continue, this, this shit will never be over with. And how can I be silenced? People say, Essie, why don't you just be quiet and go away? Why don't you just shut up and have a nice day? Because it ain't you who got a warrant for your arrest. It ain't you who been blackmailed by a high profile celebrity. It wasn't your ass who was put in the media saying you was a co-conspiracy extortionist. So media can do whatever they want to people like me. Why? Because you just, because he said it, like I'm just an average Joe Blow and you just going to do that. And I'm going to walk away. Yeah, I was connected to rerun because I'm his widow. But all of it was a lie and nobody tried to stay at face value. So why should I shut up? Now, if Steve came to me and said, Essie, I'm, I want to make your life better because I was wrong. Let's just talk this over. I would have to look him in his face because I want to know, do I believe what Mary said? Yeah, but I was like, did you try to molest Mary's son? I want to see what the nigga going to say. Did you try to? I know you ain't going to try to tell me you didn't beat Winter because I got the papers to that. Did we you know you did that. Yeah, we know, we know you did that for sure. I know for sure that you took half of the legacy and you gave it to Mary. And I know that when you were still married to Mary, even though y'all signed those papers, you had married Margie. That's a lot of shit that you've done behind closed doors. And let me put this out there. T.D. Jakes, I don't watch you. I don't care for you. I really never liked you. I didn't know like you're preaching. You sweat too much for me. You got a gap between your teeth. And because you got a gap, they pretty much say people got gaps and liars. I'm just saying. <laughs> Why I don't like T.D. Jakes is because T.D. Jakes was Mary Harvey's marriage counselor. Okay? And he tried to tell Steve, tried to tell T.D. Jakes that Mary was violating the marriage because she wouldn't be submissive and do what he say. And she was, he was like, well, Mary, why are you giving Steve a hard time? Mary say, well, T.D. Jakes, I didn't know I was giving Steve a hard time. Well, Steve... He said number two, tell me, Steve, why you giving why I'm giving you a hard time. Steve didn't say shit. Because you had mm. talked about her behind closed doors and y'all were two men. Instead of TD Jakes being a counselor, you just want to be a referee because you know Steve would slide you some money to the house of pottery or whatever the hell your name of to your company. Then to add insults to injuries, you took your sweating ass over to Hawaii and you married his mistress and Steve. So not only was you Mar Mary's marriage counselor you was the preacher that married the man that you was counseling you went and got his mistress and married his mistress knowing that he was cheating on mary i would never come to your church pastor i wouldn't come and in addition to that between td jake's daughter and all them drama with them kids she allegedly stole but well, that child molesting her husband she had allegedly well, T.D. Jakes didn't even worry about his own kids because I heard they all be sipping behind closed doors. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I so can you believe get your, own, get your own house straight before you try to come in somebody else's. But just to know that he's a pastor, he's supposed to be going by God's laws. And he's, yeah, right? But and you- the money get involved. Counselor. Money making change. Yeah. So I know you was on T.C.'s side because when he went in there, he was ready to attack Mary. But to know that you was her, see, he should say, you know what, Steve, that's a conflict of interest. I can't marry you and Margie. I don't want to go to Hawaii. He took his fat ass over there and went and married them in Hawaii. And knowing that they had, he had, this girl had been cheating with, with Mary, he had to know. So I don't like pastors like that. I'm a preacher's daughter and I don't go to my father's church because I don't like the way he prayed. So I'm not going to sit up and follow some guy because he said he got a potter house and his name T.D. Jakes and because he could talk good game out of his mouth. Because I can't really say that you are called by God when you will know that a man is cheating on his wife and you are the counselor and then you turn around and marry him with his mistress. Where they do that at? That's some low down stuff. Where they do that at? Okay, so we just calling people out. I want to make sure I don't miss nobody in there. So I never liked him. And that then when Mary told me the whole story and I found out and saw it for myself, I knew why. Mm. Um, uh, let me ask you this. And, and I don't mean you've never talked about it. And if you don't know, you don't know. Um, um, they say that Marjorie Harvey and Chris Jenner is real cool. Do you know that to be true? Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -mm. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I, I wouldn't even feel like that's true. I believe that Steve and, Steve and Chris may have been cool, but I don't think Margie. Margie don't really care either way because she just worried about the money. I thought it was her and Steve that was cool with each other, and they kicked it together. 
Let me tell you something that Mary told me. Mary said <laughs> that Margie won't be caught. Let's go back, pull the paperwork. Go back and pull up pictures on Margie and tell me how many A-list celebrities that you done seen her around. You know why they're not going to be around Margie? Because they scared that Margie going to sleep with their husband, so they don't want him around. Mary used to be kind of cool with Denzel Washington, Samuel L., um, Arnold Schwarzenegger wife. None of them didn't want to be around Margie because they thought that she would sleep with their man. I'm just saying what Mary said. Yeah, I mean, how many how many high profile celebrities y'all have seen her with? I'll wait. Go get them. Go get me the pictures of A list celebrities that you don't see Margie Harvey with, with the wife and the husband. They're not going to do it because they know Margie will sleep with cousins. And if you sleep with cousins, you'll sleep with their man. Damn. Call me, Margie. Not them saying she a no good hussy. I mean, if the shoe fits, wear it. You know, I, I don't know what you call someone who sleeps with two cousins. In my day, in the country, a cousin fucker or or horse. You know what I'm saying? Not saying you're one, Margie. You know what I'm saying? You just might have liked the wood dinglings. I don't really know because they were hey. both cousins. You may have liked it like that, but you know that you are a cheater, and we know that you are a liar, and we know that you will cover up things because. When I saw that abuse and I saw that and knew Steve was with her, I knew she would cover up anything else that he would do. Anything. Dang. And you're not going to tell me that you had, and I called that computer room where I said Mary found the computer with the naked man in Steve's room. I called that the ding ling because there was no coochies in that computer. It was all ding -a -lings. So to me, that was the ding -a -ling dungeon. And what were the six thousand dollars or ones about? And when you seen the men, were you dipping your hands in that Vaseline and doing? I'm just asking. She said it was a big jar of Vaseline. I say how big, Mary? She says one of the big tubs. Well, damn, nigga, you could just go get a little bottle. You had to go get a big tub of Vaseline. Well, where do you get the big tubs of Vaseline from, Steve? That's what I need to know. And it'll fit in the drawer. And by the way, she said the grease was nasty. The jaw was nasty on the outside. So you digging in the grease and rubbing on it, and you didn't even wash your hands and get some fresh Vaseline, whatever you. Oh. Just saying. Child. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sleep in the family ways no more. I'm just saying. Wait a minute. She said the Vaseline was dirty. Yeah, she said the jar, the whole jar was dirty. She said, because you know, she said it was a dirty desk in there and it had a, a, a computer on top of it. But she said when she opened the drawer, it was a big old jar of Vaseline sitting down in the desk drawer. And she, I said, well, how big? She said it was like a tub of it. I said, where the hell he get a tub from? She said, I don't know. She said, but it was dirty. The outside, inside was dirty. Like somebody, I guess, was playing with it and then just you just dip your nasty hands in there with your little dirt on it. And, oh, you ain't see all that dirty grease on there. Mm -hmm. Why was the why was the jar dirty? Matter of fact, why was the Vaseline even in there within the ding -a -ling dungeon? Well, here, well, here. Oh my God, I don't want to yeah, get too. I know so, um, this guy's real messy. Then it just got messy so fast. I don't. I just. I don't want to. I don't want to get too graphic. But I'm like, I'm thinking like, if that Vaseline was dirty like that. He touched the he desk, he put his jar hand in it, then he did his thing, whatever he was doing with the Vaseline. You know what I'm saying? Whatever he was doing, he was doing with the Vaseline. And then what? You did you even wipe your hands off? Or did you get good and then you just touched the more dirt and you went back in there? But to know the whole jar was dirty, go get Mary, go get her son, and go get her niece. Her niece validated it. I'm now I'm wondering if he was playing in his own butt. That's what I'm wondering. He probably was. He was playing with something. But then he might not be doing that because he could have playing with his weenie. But not only that, who else was you playing with? Because she said he had $6,000 worth of ones, not 20s, $6,000. I said, how do you know it was that many ones? She said she sat and counted it. And oh, they put no. everything back. And he didn't even know they had been in that room that day. And after that, she said she started watching him. And then after that, he did that with Mary's son, trying to molest Mary's son. Next thing he knows, she started trying to move away. Because, listen, Steve never tried to divorce. Mary divorced Steve. That's why. Y'all better ask some questions. Mary divorced Steve. So now you know why. You try to come at a son. You got a ding -a -ling dungeon. You got bras that you. So you will spend your weenie all across the universe. So transgenders to ding -a -lings and to men. Or you just like to watch men do it with each other. You just play with yourself in a ding -a -ling dungeon. I mean, we can ask you, Steve. But I'm sure you ain't going to tell us. But. And see, it'd be different if just Mary said it. The son said it and the niece said it. 
So come on, let's go do this. We're going to call all of us lies. Then I'm going to ask the judge to tell your ass to take a lie detector test because I'll pass mine, will you? Mm. <laughs> I'm serious. Let's get it out of here. I'm going to take our clothes off. That's what he was doing in that dungeon. I'm going to take my clothes off. Mm -hmm. Then wash yep. your hands. Always got a dungeon boy, and just the with well, just the fact that he had that digital lock on it lets you know it was it, it was some nefarious things going on. And you know, I forgot what Mary said the code was on it, but it was some shit that she would if they kept playing it and they find a guy. I don't know if it was Winter's birthday or it was somebody's birthday or something, and they figured the damn code out. But he had it backwards instead of frontwards, and they figured it out. They kept playing with it because he had went out of town. So they had a couple days that they could do it with. Dang. Mm -mm -mm. And then his tendencies. Like, if you go back and see some of those stalking videos, how he get angry, how he talk about women, he de he, he, de he demeanors women behind closed doors. Call a bitch. Look at all the stuff you see in the text messages, the threats about the court cases. I was bitches and everything, chocolate shake, everything that you could think of. They were coming from Steve Harvey. I'm in a program right now called Safe at Home. Safe at Home is a program for victims of domestic violence or stalking. It is in the state of California. You cannot get in this program without proof. You have to have 100% beyond a shadow of doubt proof in order to get in this program. A district attorney helped me get in this program. I did the majority of myself, but they came and did everything for me. And we went back and forth. I show her the videos. I show her the text messages. And the main people that I named in the stalking was Steve Harvey, Bobby Edmond, which is an attorney at law, Ricky Anderson, Margie Harvey. Them was the four corporates that I named for show. The mm. rest of them, but them four, I named. Mary even said she heard Winter talking stupid to me on one of those videos. That site that you said you knew was stalking me, I have a video that Geneva did, and I can send it to you, where okay. Mary's talking about them stalking me, and she heard Winter voice on there. She went back to her son and say, who do this sound like, Steven? She said, damn, that's my brother Winton. So this dude even had Winton over there trying to stalk me. Mary's watching everything and heard her son's voice on here. And they're still letting Steve stay up here and do what he's doing to violate people. And until that warmth is off me, I'm going to always feel like I'm violated. If he came and sat me behind closed doors and we talked, I might would feel a little better, but it still ain't going to help what I've lost, Storm. I had a salon before I met Mary. I was doing, like, you know what I'm saying? I had to move out of one place into a whole nother location, you know, because I didn't know what this man was going to do. And because you see him smiling, he's not a true character to who he say he is. He is a man of vision. Vi what was it? He is a man who is of um, vengeance. He he will go after you. He doesn't like to lose. In, in March, no, January, no, August 2020, I got a restraining order against Steve Harvey. If I didn't send it to you, I'll send it to you. The judge signed off on it. The restraining order would have been until this year. He gave me a three-year restraining order. They turned around and took my paperwork and sent it to an address that I was not at no more. I just happened to go into an email and they sent it at the last minute. By the mm -hmm. time I could go to court and fight Steve Harvey behind this, this restraining order, they had turned around and lied and just it just went out the door. So I'm kind of glad in one way that it did because I couldn't been up here talking like I'm talking right now because I was still been under restraining order. See what I'm saying? So when he went and paid that judge, Garcia, to take the restraining order off on him in San Bernardino County Court, Judge Garza, he need to be up on the investigation too because you cannot give anybody a restraining order unless you got valid proof. Mm -hmm. I told that judge that Steve Hart was blackmailing me. That judge didn't care. They still took that warrant, that, that restraining order off Steve Harvey because his lawyers was coming in there lying. But it was okay too because when he did that, it just made my vengeance that much more for him. And then I knew what to do because I knew then that I had no way out of anything. And that's why I'm doing the book right now. I'm not going to make that shit long and draw it out. I'm going straight to the facts. And again, what, seven chapters? It may not even be 400 pages. Besides the court documents, the threats, the violence, the restraining orders, and all, I got about 
about five police reports filed against Steve Harvey and y'all ain't get him yet. So all those kind of things is going to be in my book. A lot of mm -hmm. times people write about stuff and they don't have the physical proof. I'm going to have the physical proof of everything that's in there from the restraining orders to the court documents. And I'm going to have a chapter saying Mary said and everything that Mary said that she wrote beyond herself. That's how I'm coming. We need that to put that on the T-shirt. We hmm? put that on the T-shirt. Mary yeah. said. Mary said. Mary said. I would love to have a conversation with Mary too, but I just. You know what? They scare, they'll scare her. They will scare her. Yeah. Um. They anytime what 2021. We I think we did a video with Mary in 2022. Me and Geneva. We somebody offered me and Mary a reality show 2021, but Mary got scared. And then I guess Steve said they was gonna pay her off. Somebody says that one of the the, the sites that I said is Ricky Anderson. He put on there that Mary's bills are being paid by Steve Harvey. If you ain't connected to Steve Harvey, how the hell would you know that? And if you go listen to The Truth, the one I told you about is Ricky Anderson, and go listen to Ricky Anderson voice, you'll know it's Ricky. But I'm going to do better than that. And don't pull, I'll pull your whole card. He got so bold that he went on somebody's site. I forgot the name of the guy. I'll send it to you. But they said, The Truth, are you Ricky Anderson? Then he said, yeah, that's my name. Are you a white boy? He said, no, but I, I've been told I sound white. So he just re admitted that he was Ricky Anderson, which is Steve Harvey's attorney, which is the same nigga that I said was in the police reports when I said they were stalking me. And I taped him saying that. So I got that on tape. Mm -hmm. And I can see you that if you want me to. So he admitted that he was Ricky Anderson and that he was a part of that site, the same site that I said was stalking me. He needed to be held accountable. His ass needed to be disbarred for sitting up here letting Steve Harvey pay him to go out to black women to violate them. You were, of course, his you are his widow. I am. Um, I guess the people would want to know how was he as a person. He was he was okay. Everything you see on TV is not of silver and gold. It's not what you really would think it was going to be. He was one person behind closed doors, but he was another person. When I left Georgia, I married him in Huntsville, Alabama. But when I came to to California, he appeared to be a whole nother person. He was not the person that I thought he was going to be, but I still loved him anyway. Um, it was abuse in there. Well, he tried to be abusive to me. I'm not really the country girl to be abusive to because I'll set your ass on fire and ask questions later. Um, there was one time when he threatened me and I didn't know what he was going to do. And I'm not going to lie, I tied him to a chair. He fell asleep in the chair. When he woke up, he was tied in it because I wanted to know why he threatened me. But I'm a country sister, so I wouldn't know. Um, it was certain times where he got mad because I wanted to walk away. He would go out. He broke my windows out of my car and threatened my life. He told me he thought um, he dreamed I, he shot my chest out with a double barrel shotgun in my sleep. Mm. I never knew why he would think about doing things like that, but I never knew he was a violent man either. I found that out after the fact, but I knew as a man and individual that he had been through so much, but it still don't give you the right to disrespect or hurt women. The things that you guys see of him being a happy-go-lucky, pop-locking, hip-hop person, he was that. He could dance his ass off and he was good at what he do. But yet and still he was broken on the inside and a lot of people didn't see that. He loved being famous, but when he didn't have that red beret on, nobody knew who Fred Berry was. And that bothered him that nobody knew him. There were so many demons that he carried within himself that it was unexplainable when changes came about because I didn't know how to react to certain things. But I moved so fast because I did not know I was going to marry him. He said, you ain't married. I'm not married. Let's go to California and take it by storm. I had oh. already felt like, yeah, I had felt like I had outgrew Columbus, Georgia. I was a massive cosmetologist. I would win all my hair shows before we left California. I mean, before we left Georgia, we did a big hair show there. And um, I think we raised over $40,000, if not more. That's how we got from. Georgia to California. But then after I got here, we was getting ready to do a movie deal about him and my life story. 
them producers love me. They love me. They love some bubble and brown sugar. They love country people for whatever reason. But then Fred got mad and he stopped the whole deal. So it was if it wasn't about him, it couldn't be about anybody. That was one reason why I was going to have the reality show to show you that everything that you think is green on one side is not. It don't stop me from loving Fred. It doesn't stop me from seeing who he was or what's happening. And I don't want you guys to look at anything any differently. But when you read my book, I'm not going to be in my book and lie and act like he was a soldier and some of the things he did to me and he did to the other women as well. But I'm going to let them share that story because that's their truth to tell. But in those relationships before me, all these women had some type of abuse that they suffered behind Fred Berry. And when the police was called, they did just like they did when I called the police. They did nothing to help us, nothing mm -hmm. to set us free. And there was nothing that I could do about that. So I had to pretty much learn like California on my own. And like people say, don't tell about how rerun did you because it's going to disrupt his legacy. Well, hell, mine was already disrupted when I left um, Georgia. And one day I was sitting in this garage because we had moved in the hood because he wanted to be in Hollywood. I didn't like Hollywood. It was too phony. It was too artificial. Everybody was all over the place and they couldn't even relate to a sister like me. And we had moved in this little condo. It was in the hood. I was real cool with it. But some country folks owned it from Montgomery, Alabama, and they loved me to death. The old woman said, Essie, come downstairs and I want you to listen to something. So she hid me behind this stand and I sat there and I listened. And Rerun told that man that he brought me out here to pimp me because he knew I was a money maker. Now you pimp a hoe. So you brought me out because he saw I was talented. Like when I do hair, I create like robot churches, bird cages. I do shit that moves on top of your head. My, I'm a fantasy person. My creativity level goes beyond, beyond a whole nother level of a, a situation. So to know that I had married someone and didn't know he was abusive. I didn't know that he didn't have a relationship with his children. I didn't know that they considered him a deadbeat father. I didn't know he was abusive to the women before. I found out all these things later. So even though he was a fat, happy, pop-locking cat, he had he had his own demons. But when he came to Georgia, we would go out, we would kick it. I introduced him to so many positive people. He was there to do a movie about his life story called Testify. And when I say Fred Rerun Berry loved himself, he loved himself. I got documents, probably about 400 to 1,000 about this thick of documents that he left. So that's how I tell you how good I am with paperwork. These, this paperwork is from 1976 on down. And mm -hmm. that paperwork will be in my book to show his story. So I'm going to tell some of my truth, but I don't want people to look bad at him because I told my truth because he made such an inspiration to so many people um, in front of the camera, but behind closed doors, he was broken. And a lot of women, they shut up and didn't say anything. They remained in silence. I don't know if I had to knew who he was then, would I have married him? But because how he died, you know, I married him October the 22nd, 1999. He died October the 21st, 2003. So God had to know that I was going to be the woman that carried his legacy. So I want to do it in an upright position. But I want everybody to know just because you see somebody don't mean they ain't they don't have demons. Don't mean that they're perfect because everybody see Fred and all they see is a pop like it dances. But behind closed doors. He was a bad cat as far as how he treated women. And each mm -hmm. one of the wives that that went on with, that's why I was going to have them on widow wives and exes to give them that platform to tell their story, to not make you look at rerun any type of way, but to know that there are women like me who has been in the celebrity industry. And I know when you say something, they will not believe you. But Fred is deceased now. And I can't change what has happened. But if my voice can do something to make someone stronger to know it ain't what it's cut out to be, I'm not going to hide that truth to make him look good and then not tell the real truth of how the celebrity world really is. I even asked one of his ex-wives, do you think that he sold his soul? She said humility. She said, yeah, she think he sold his soul on humility. You know what I'm saying? And he was a millionaire twice. How you get to be a millionaire and you're broke? And now his legacy is worth $12 million. 
So if not more, I seen 12, I seen five, I see 250. And someone said, Ms. Barry, do you know whatever reruns legacy is worth? That is what you're worth. I said, is that right? So you now I, yeah. I didn't know that though. I didn't know yeah. that. So where is that money? So I have some attorneys right now looking into that. I'm getting ready to make a deal with them because I know that the rest of the cast members want to do a movie and other things, but they can't do shit without me signing something. And I don't sign no $2 contracts. I would rather sit on his story for the rest of my life to sign a $2 contract and y'all make all the money and then his family go broke. We're not doing that. So my best thing now is, and I'm just about finished, to finish up my book, to put everything in it so people can see who he was for himself because he was a foster kid, used to eat out of trash cans. You know, he never wow. knew his father. Yeah. Um, he legally changed his name to Rerun because the white people in the industry tried to take his name. Before he became Rerun, he was a locker. He was a group called The Locker, and they discovered Pop Locker, which ventured off into break dancing. So he danced with Frank Sinatra, traveled all over the world with the group of The Lockers. And then one day he went to ABC, and he said they was looking for a white boy. See, Fred Berry, when they cast the ABC and y'all see him on What's Happening, it was supposed to be a skinny white boy. And Fred showed up. He said, here I am. They say, no, we're looking for a skinny Caucasian man. We're not looking for you. Fred said, but I can do it. He did the part. They let him try it out for it because he showed up. And two weeks later, when he came back, they called him and he became rerun. So he gave y'all a character. Y'all gave him a name. But then when rerun and what's happening went into syndication and they want to do what's happening now, Fred wanted more money and they didn't want to give him more money. So they tried to stop him from using his name and they took rerun and say, because he's dressed like he dressed, you can't use rerun no more. I have those documents. He legally went to court with his mother before she, before she died and he changed his name to Fred rerun Barry. So his biological name is Rerun. And when he changed his name, that way he was already could use his character because he came dressed. When y'all see him suspend their baggy pants, that's how he dressed as the lockers. But when he got on that show, they was like, we're going to take your legacy. You can't use your own rights no more. That's what made me know how Hollywood is. That's why if you ain't got the majority of the rights to anything, then don't even sign the paper. Because if you get in 1% of something more than what you are, then it's an issue. Less than 90 days ago, maybe uh, last year, I was discussing a, a business deal because they wanted to do a show on me called Born Again Version. I'm with that, right? But then they wanted 51%, but they'll say, I'll give you whatever you want, Miss Barry. We'll give you the money, whatever. But you want 51%. Which means you own the majority, which means you you control me at that point. Right. And, 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 and Storm, when I say they went at me to try to get this, they really wanted me to sign... I just could not give someone 51% of who I am because if I'm coming up with the idea of born again virgins, so how many more born again again virgins that you're going to see? Because I could take a lie detector test, but it just reminded me of how they took reruns legacy. Yeah. And I didn't want to do that and how he had to fight. And if we don't take control of who we are, then someone own the rights of who you are. And then they have the controlling right of that. And so now I got lawyers looking in on that because I want his legacy to be preserved. I want the story to be told, but I want it to be told truthful. That's why I don't have to go get none of the ex-wives. I could tell his story without them. I just chose to get them to give them the benefit of the doubt. But at the end of the day, that was his story. And he left it in a big folder so I can tell it. And the demons that he went through in the past from the women or whatever, I can't say why he went through that. I know what I went through with him, but it didn't stop me from loving him. It don't make me want y'all to say, don't watch what's happening because it happened because I still stood by my man anyway. But God allowed for me to be his wife because of the dates. Every other woman that rerun would marry, he would marry them and go back to the state that he married them in. He would divorce them and go take their shit. Oh, Worse them, he go take all their stuff. So he didn't get to do that to me, nor was God going to let him do that to me. And I'm smart enough to allow that. But that was who he was. And I can tell y'all, maybe me and Storm will come back and we'll talk about the whole what's happening cast because I can roast some of them as well. I won't get down into that right now, but there's a lot of dark stories behind that that people don't know about that they need to tell. And no disrespect to nobody, Ernie and all them, Ernest Thomas, Ernest Thomas is a fucking liar. 
It's a lot of shit that he lied about. Now, if you want to go get me and Ernest Thomas on this screen together and we can talk, we can do that. But I know you're a natural born liar. And I know a lot of stuff that they all said about rerun wasn't true. And because of Fred, like they were going to cancel what's happening. OK, Fred went to him and say, yo, we're going to stand together. Let's do this. When they got to the me, Fred was the only one stood up. And then right after that, they fired Fred and then everybody else came in. But they couldn't hold that. They could not hold that show without Fred, because besides Fred Berry, Shirley and D, that was the funniest character characters. Yeah, those, that was the show. That yeah, was the that's, show. that's really all who people remember. Ernest yeah. was trying to hold on. But he was jealous of Fred. And I could tell that because we did a show called Unsung in 2014. You might could find that. We did an Unsung. They start calling me. Couldn't nobody do shit. I wasn't going to do it. But then Francesca, his work first wife called. And I said, OK, I'll do it. But then after we did it, they went up there and told the producer all kind of ugly stuff about me. And the producers, they were walking on eggshells. So I said, let me play this game since y'all listen to what he going to say instead of knowing who I am. And so I was like, give me some fried chickens, some collard greens, some cornbread. I want some apple pie. I was acting like that kind of bitch walking up in there, right? Only because he had already painted a picture of me. And then they was like, Miss Bear, we're so sorry. I said, because Francesca told me some of the things that were said. So I went back to them and told them, don't do that. Don't judge a book by its cover. And when it was all said and done, I was one of the highest paid people on Unsung because I negotiated my own deal, okay? But at the end of the day, like Ernest and was mad because they wanted me to just keep signing contracts for shit that didn't make sense. And I wasn't going to do that. Yeah. So now I'm in negotiation to see where this is going to go, that I can sign some type of rights over that I won't be compensated, but they can use the rights to go ahead and do Fred Berry's legacy and his life story because it needs to be told. And he paved the way for so many people in the world and heavy set people, too. His personal life, if you told people about his personal life, they probably would judge him. But if that's the case, y'all ask me to judge Steve Harvey, too, and a lot of these other ragged, raggedy celebrities that be doing what they do, too. So you can't hold no stone because all these celebrities are raggedy behind closed doors, and they put a picture in front of a, a screen, and they want you to believe it. And that's including Fred Berry. I'm a Southern girl born and raised in Columbus, Georgia. I don't have time to be fake and shaking and playing. It's not that serious to me. What I said is what I said, and I mean what I say. And I'm not going to backtrack on anything that I say. I don't care if I got discovered and I'm, I'm highly famous or whatever. You go back and say I called somebody a nigga, I'll be like, yeah, I called him a nigga because he was acting like a nigga. If you're a racist, I'm going to say you're racist. If you're a liar, I said it. You're not yeah. going to make me look bad because I done got up in the industry. And you're not going to take who I am away because God already created me to be who I'm supposed to be. So you can't take away none that ain't already given to me. That, that, that is true. And I will say this to the <laughs> I, I'm like, dang, if I if I had if I had Miss Essie Berry as my manager, I could probably take this industry by storm. <laughs> you probably could. You probably um, could. Because I know you will make sure I got paid. Of um, course. But it's interesting you say that too, because I feel like, and this is kind of unrelated, but I feel like God protected me as well because i tried to get into the industry as a kid and i never really like talked about it. i just started talking about it a little bit but it was like every time i would try to get in it's like it would be blocked mm -hmm. now i'm thankful because i see how these disney kids turned out nickelodeon kids turned out they and they're not lying stuff. you know they ain't lying i'm just you saying and my, mom, and my mom was a single mom we're from the midwest so they probably would have made her sign me over to some manager and who knows what they would have did to me? Like, who knows? Correct. So and, and, and the bad part about it is, I feel like Fred got violated in the industry because I asked Francesca and then I talked to Fred and certain things he would close down about. So I know he got violated. I even said for me as well, so many contracts that came to me, Mr. Storm, like even here recently, you know, I'm going to send you a video because we're doing a breakdance boot camp. Breakdance boot camp was I was gonna go get all the old school players who created breakdance and pop locking because Paris Olympics now have honored breakdancing as an actual sport. Mm -hmm. So Tampa, Florida is getting ready to pick up the boot camp for me, and we may be filming out there. I'm still working the technicalities though. But if it means that I got to do something to sell my soul, we won't be doing that either. Because I'm not gonna be willing to jeopardize myself 
Like, even though, like what I told you about the show, I'm not going to jeopardize myself. I'm not going to kind of contract. And I'm definitely not going to let someone have more percentage because you're giving me more money. Then we need to work something out differently. I done came up with half of the ideas. It's a lot of ideas that I done came up with that I can show you. And if you don't put it down in paper and you do it right, y'all, they'll steal it. They will steal it. I can tell you about one right now with the dance crew. Somebody stole that idea from me. Your ass ain't trying to see me in court because I still got a poor man copyright. And let me tell you what a poor man copyright is. Say if you come up with an idea, Mr. Storm, and it's your idea, and then somebody said, oh, I came up with it only because you told that person. But if you take your idea and you write it down on a piece of paper, you take it and you put it in an envelope, you put your address at the top, and you put your address at the bottom, you mail it back to yourself, but when you take it in there, you're going to ask for it registered and certified. They're going to put a green piece of paper on the back of it and they're going to stamp it and they're going to seal it. If somebody go to court and say, yo, I got this idea from Mr. Storm Rose. I mean, I got this idea. It ain't Storm Rose. It's mine. This is my idea. Knowing you created it and you got that paper sealed, you can walk up in court. The judge will unseal that paper and he will give you that shit automatically because back in the day when white men and slave masters you steal black folks ideas the only thing they could do is do a poor man copyright in order to save themselves so they would not steal their legacy and their ideas i want a lawsuit behind that i want a case of a poor man copyright because i did a digital image of something that was on my shop and the white man wanted to say that he created this image my ex-husband my children father drew the image and i had did a poor man copyright and i put it up and two years later, that poor man copyright saved me because it was registered. But when you get it, you can never open it. The only way you have to open it, if somebody came and took your idea and you had to challenge them on it and you go to court, you will win hands down. Mm -hmm. I will. I would keep that in mind about something, actually. Um, but that's also why I went and trademarked my name. <laughs> the, and not only that, the character yeah, exactly. I came up with, I trademarked that too. But I'm going to do that poor man copyright too. If, if it's something, if you come up with an idea or something and you know it's yours, and I, I had to learn that the hard way. I done seen like four or five ideas that I done put out there and I done seen them on TV. And why I say that is because they have something called a Screen Actors Writers Guild. And you can register your idea. Then a producer might go in there. He might want to use that idea and they'll contact you. But after a certain amount of years, if you got that idea in there and you don't go back and register it, somebody can snatch your idea. I didn't oh, know. So they just wait for that shit to expire. And, and, just and that's it. exactly what they do. And that's how they get a lot of their shows online because of that. So it's a dirty game. Yes, it is. It's a dirty game. Maybe I need to just produce my own stuff. Just go the Tyler Perry route. Just produce my own stuff. Because Hollywood just sounds like if you ain't giving up ass and your soul and your self-respect and dignity. Because every, every, every nigga you see that they put on a pedestal, they ain't got their self-respect, their soul, or their dignity. When I first came out, and here, I gotta be me, I will cuss your ass out. That's me. I don't, I don't care about no camera. And, and I'm like that too. I was supposed to be. I don't know if y'all ever seen a movie called Go for Broke. Bobby Brown was in it. Lisa Ray was in it. A lot of people. There was a chick named Goldie. That's one who had got out of prison. I was supposed to be her. I went to the set because they was filming that that day. I had just got out here, whatever year that was, and this producer took me on set to 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 this filming. So I had the flip little hairdo. I was blonde at that time, looking real cute. And they wanted me to be Goldie. So I was about to be in the shop washing up. And the chick was going to come slap my ass. And they said, they're going to pay me $25,000. But I had to be in the shower naked. I told them I'm not going to do that. When I say them cats sat there about two hours trying to get me to do that, I said, I'm not going to do it. Not for no $25,000. I'm not going to do it for any amount of money. I just don't feel comfortable. And if I don't feel comfortable, it doesn't matter how much money you give me. I'm not going to lose my self-dignity. But they thought because they said, we'll give it to you right now. We make you get residuals. I wasn't doing it. I didn't know the industry like I know it now. And I was not comfortable. But they thought because they said that, that I would jump on and be like, oh, okay. I didn't do it. It wasn't worth it. And it's not. And another thing, pictures, you guys. Safe answer storm, me and you got this right here, and we got this picture. We take this picture, me and you. Okay. So you own this picture, right? But if somebody came right now with me and say, I want to sell, I want to buy the picture of you and Essie, you can't sell that shit without me. You can't do nothing with it. You will have to come back and ask me, could you take this picture and sell it? 
or any footage because if not, somebody can get you for copyright. Let me tell you how I know. There were pictures of Fred that was took in the past. If y'all see Fred Ruimberry, you'll see him like to the side. He is in black and white and he got his beret suspended back. I bought all those pictures from the photographer. You know why? Because he had owned them and then people were using them. And then they were saying that I had to pay to use them. I'm not going to pay to use nothing. So any pictures that if somebody owned of my husband, I went back and bought them. So I got pictures that nobody has ever seen before that's going to be in the book too. That will be a part of his legacy. Some things that have not been seen. But if you go and you use somebody's picture, and because I want a lawsuit like this, uh, I'm just going to put this out there. I ain't going to say what it was. I know everybody know who Giddy Image is. Y'all know them? Giddy Image? How about I want a lawsuit against them? Let's mm. go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they settled out of court. I'll tell you about that. Um, I said, I because you know, once you said, of course, you're going to keep your mouth shut. But they were using pictures of me and Fred um, funeral pictures. They used his funeral pictures. And I found out that they were selling them overseas. And they're going to tell me they weren't selling them. And they were selling pictures of me. And I looked crazy as hell because I was crying. So what I did, I contacted the company and I bought the pictures of myself. And they still was lying. So I hired an attorney. And I bought those pictures and I gave them to the attorney and I won hands down out of court. Anybody else, they had to go back and sue them themselves. I was just worried about me at the time, but I won against Getty Image. So let's go play. Getty, don't make me pull it because you can't win. But I went after them. So when you use somebody's image and their likeness, you got to ask them. Because then what happened is, okay, so I had, I didn't get as much as I should have because I had a radio talk show called Spit It Out. Spit It Out was aired out of uh, Ohio, and it was a, a, a internet radio talk show. We was number one on the board, but then they started wanting to get cr crazy and talk about a ledge. I don't do a ledge, and the Jew tried to check me on the mic, and I checked his ass, and I came all the way off the mic. But in the process of doing that, I learned so much about like people like this, what you can and can't do, because if a person take a picture of you and he's a photographer and you let them take that picture of you, they own your picture storm. So you mm. better take your own pictures because if you let someone else do it, they own that picture and pretty much they're going to say that they can sell it and they'll sell it to the highest bidder. But then you got to figure out how to go back and get it. So when they start selling my pictures to the highest bidders, I knew how to go back and get my pictures. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna leave it there. This was this was good. We we gonna we we gonna we gonna come back and, uh, again for sure because I know the people gonna have questions and I was I, I will say this. Thank you first off for sitting with me because you didn't have to do that. So right. first off, thank you, thank you for sure, and spending three hours with me on your Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I will say. <laughs> if anything you want Essie Berry on your side for sure for sure because I'm a ride of that sister and but maybe Storm we can come back and you can talk more about the stalking that part and because you said you're going to take we're going to leave it right here give him a little bit of suspense but you say you know for a fact too that it was Steve now but I'm going to see you some more footage and make sure that you know it's him and then maybe we can come back with that after we do all that they heard because they're going to have questions because they're going to see how he violated me and some of the stuff I've already given you. So I would want I want to hear how you know that's a that's he's a stalker as well. And what did you find out? You know, what I'm saying that's important to me. I want to say that I'm very grateful to you for having me on your platform. I think you're a tremendous guy. I think you're funny. I think you're smart. I feel like you can go a long way. I feel like you're a leader and you are not a follower. I like that you don't get shooken too easy. And if you get shooken now, you got a sister for life. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call. I don't change. I'm very direct about what I do and say. I just don't like no two faces and all the playing games. I didn't go on people's platforms because I did not want them to take my story and make it into something funny when it was nothing funny about anything I've been through. Yeah, so that's yeah. why I trusted you enough to come on your platform and be how I am and know I felt like, like Geneva did, I feel like you will protect me. And I have to give my shout out to Geneva's Closet for a sister who rode with me for five years on this case, 
bloggers, everybody saw that was going on with me and nobody said anything. It was like they were trying to exclude. Let's don't say nothing about Essie Berry. Let's don't say nothing about GD's closet. But it seemed like Storm that everybody tried to go around the fact of Essie Berry was the one who truly brought all this shit out about Steve. So I want to thank you, too, for recognizing that and speaking up on that because it seemed like people try to go around, but you can't go around true facts. And what I did not want to do is bring you anything and everything we've talked about on this platform, you guys. I put it in black and white. Mr. Storm has it. And should someone come back to Mr. Storm, that would be a bad issue because just as I, I'm professional, I will get on this Internet and I will roast you like you stole something. And I want people to know. When they see civil rights activists, that is a title that I've given myself and I've honored that and I've worked by that. But at the end of the day, my name is Essie Bear and I'm a human being and I, I give what is given. And for every action, there will always be a reaction. And do not think that I'm not the type of person that you just can come up and bully me or do what you want to do. I'm going to give you what you give me. And if you come too stupid, I'm just like the next person. I will get on this end and cuss you out. And then I go ask God for forgiveness. But what I won't do is stand and, and let someone violate me. And I know that I'm telling the truth. So to be up on a platform of your magnitude, and I love that you're a guy, because I really don't like women like that. I love y'all, but I don't like women like that. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it real, because women are real messy. You know what I'm saying? It's an honor to get a, a refresher course on someone new that feels and understands and ain't scared to speak out about what we're going through. And you've done that, Mr. Storm, you know, and much props to you and much success. I see you going to large places. And if I can ever pick up and make a phone call for you, I will. You know, I can make anything happen if I truly wanted to, but it got to make sense. If it doesn't make sense and you're going to lose yourself or lose who you are, then you really don't truly want to do it. Because what people don't realize, this is a dressing up room down here. Whatever we do, we're going to do it from down here. And if you don't live right down here, you're going to die. And what you going to do when you die? So none of this shit is all like permanent. It's just a momentary substance. So we need to make sure we're visual about the things we do while we're here on earth and the people we coordinate with, the people we respond to, how we relate to people, because people don't realize these are spirits. We are of the flesh, but these are different spirits that we're dealing with. And you don't have control over nobody else's spirit. Some people come in your life for a reason. Some come for a season. And some come for a lifetime. And I would hope that I would be part of your lifetime, Mr. Storm. Uh, it's Storm Show. Hey, it's Storm Show.